All right, y'all, yesterday's thrift haul was sick. We got 29 items at a different Goodwill. We're gonna hit up this Goodwill right here for the next hour or so. I don't know, you think we can find 29 items? I freaking hope so, that'd be awesome. Hope everyone's having a good Tuesday. If you're joining for the first time, I go live to thrift stores looking for stuff to resell online. I do this every Tuesday, 1 p.m. Eastern time. Glad you're joining today. If you miss any part of this, the full recording will be up on YouTube. Got my Ikea bag. Finally remembered it. I always forget it. We are at Goodwill. There you go. There's your hand. Goodwill. Uh, let's see. Some bikes. $40 for that old mongoose. We got an Oasis Magna for 50 bucks. Let's go. 15 speed piece right there that bikes probably is almost as old as me all right so this thrift store has sucked lately and look at all this empty inventory or empty racks look at this you have like a hundred shirts on this rack but at least they're stocking at least two working hard all right thank you for the positive thrifting juju if this one if this store stinks we'll go to another store that's, a, that's what's up. So that's my promise to you. If this stinks, I'll end it. We'll go to another store. We'll go live there. This might stink. But I hope it doesn't. Men's club. There you go. How do you have like a rack that's this long? It's that empty. There's maybe 30 shirts on this rack. You could probably fit 200. Lacoste sleepwear. It's alright. We can still find good stuff even though there's not a lot of stuff. We know so many different brands. I got the chat. Got my back. Chat teaches me new brands. Typically every week I'll learn something from the chat. So we're going to need to work at this together. There's really not much to pick from. Pop that right there. Hit up this fresh rack. Lake Murray stand up paddleboard classic. October 1, 2016. That was a good day, wasn't it? North Face t shirt. XL Slim Fit. I'm going to pass on that. That's a cool shirt, though. Turning the tide. How are you, brother? I'm good. Look at how empty that rack is. They're working hard, though. I respect them. They're just understaffed. These humans are doing the best they can do. Of course, they looked at me weird when I looked on the new cart racks. That's crazy. I was at one of the other, I was at another Goodwill yesterday and there was two people just stocking like crazy at the store. So much good stuff. I was picking all kinds of great stuff off the, the fresh racks. And I, I talked to the people, you know, I'm like, hey, are you cool if I just go in here and look at some stuff? They're like, this one dude, he's like, of course. He's like, if you take stuff off this rack, that's less stuff that I have to stock. He's like, so yeah, take all of it, please. So it's crazy to me that people wouldn't want it, you to take it off it. But there's one store I go to. It's a good store. They stock really well, but they freaking don't let you go to the fresh racks. They're really defensive about it. I swear they spend more of their time and mental energy defending those racks and yelling at people than they do stalking. But again, it's their house, their rules. I'm in Asheville, North Carolina. So everyone, I, I, everything I buy here today, unless I find something really cool for me, is going to be listed on eBay, Poshmark, Depop, Mercari, Grailed, and did I miss something? Facebook Marketplace. There we go. It's five o'clock somewhere. Yeah, it is. We're looking for all kinds of brands. The list is too long. If you have favorite brands that you like to look for at the thrift store, go ahead and drop them down here in the chat. If you're watching this live, I want to hear from you. Where are you joining from? What's your favorite things to find? 
If I pass by something that you know that I don't know, let me know. Here's a Carhartt t-shirt. Would you all pick this up? It'll be $4.99. Would you buy a Carhartt pocket tee size medium? I wouldn't, but curious if you do. There's back-to-backs. There's another one, medium. Orange, if that's your flavor. Another one here. Three of them. Would you buy those? $4.99 a pop. Here's what they tell me at these... Thanks for the invitation to join. No, uh, I'm gonna decline for now. I'm gonna fly solo here, but appreciate the invitation. Maybe some other time. So here's what they tell me at this at these Goodwills in Nor Goodwills in Northwest North Carolina. The t-shirts are typically $2.99, and the like all other shirts are $4.99. Tees are $2.99, but this will be $4.99 because they tell me it's not actually a t-shirt because there's a seam on the side. See that? So there's a seam on the side of the shirt, on side of the t-shirt. So therefore, it's not a t-shirt. That's what they told me. They've told me that here, and they've told me at uh, this location I went to yesterday. But that's what they, that's the difference. Have you ever heard of such a crazy thing? So these aren't t-shirts, according to Goodwill, because they have a seam. Does anyone know how to cross list on multiple platforms easily? I use Vendu. I have a link up in my profile, Chris, or you can go to chrisatpeak.com or you just click on my name up above. There's a link for Vendu. I've been using that to cross list for 23 months now. Here's a brand I pick up sometimes, Duluth. Big fan of Vendu. Check it out. There's a free trial. And if you like it, that link gets you 25% off your first month. Just a little. Hey, everyone likes a little discount. What is this? Saxophone USA? Kind of like a vintage e looking Western. You know, I like Western Pearl Snaps. It's got that metallic. You see that? Another one of those car haunts. We all said we'd pass on those. Here's a Travis Maddie. This might be our first find so far. Size medium. Great brand here. Not the best size, but. Cool pattern on it. We'll pick that up. It'll be $4.99. All shirts will be $4.99, unless it's a t-shirt without seams. <clears throat> Excuse me. We did a long lab this morning that lasted into the afternoon. We talked about all kinds of stuff. If you want to join that daily live, it is Monday, or sorry, weekdays, 9.30 a.m. Eastern time. I ship out all my orders. We drink a whole bunch of coffee. We talk about all sorts of stuff, including Bone Thugs and Harmony, apparently. Fun live today. Thanks. If you're joining for the second time today, if you want to just drop down below in the chat, put a, like, a little emoji or something down there. Let me know that you're joining for the second time today. Double dipping. Shot metallic always, yes. You think so? Size medium, men's, ugly color. I like the metallic though. Rising, if you say yes, I'm picking it up. I love Western Pearl Snaps. And typically I'd be like, hey, that's gonna go in my closet and I'm gonna wear that while it sells because it's, it's peak size or it might be peak size. But that is an ugly color, y'all. Eric Hayes, I felt like an idiot. What? Notre Dame stuff sells really well for me? Absolutely. It's one of those, the best kind of college brands to be looking for. All right, so that's all the short sleeves. Oh no, I got more. How are you? Hey there, doing good. Pretty day out there. And here we are inside, you know? <laughs> it's a lovely free thing. <laughs> yep. Sorry, I'll sneak that out of your way. All right, so we'll pick this one up. Uh, maybe. Yeah, it's in pretty good shape. So Brooks Brothers, it's got the logo here. This is called the Performance Polo. That's an interesting tag, how it's like. But anyway, Performance Polo, size large. I like the bigger sizes in these better, but this is the time of year to pick up like mediocre. This is definitely mediocre inventory. Should sell for about 20 bucks plus shipping. Nice blue collar on it. Logo on the chest is key on those. Under Armour, size large, I'll pass on that. Not a very modern one. I pass on most Under Armour. I'm right under the speaker right now, so it's got to blare for a second.
Don't worry, K-Way's in the house. If you're not following K-Way, give K-Way a follow. He'll be live tonight. So I do 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time Lives, and my brother K-Way does the evening time 9.30. So just remember 9.30. And either K-Way will be live in the evening, or I'll be live in the morning. 9.30 Eastern is all you got to remember. What brand was that gold Western shirt spelling? Wayne, you got to look it up. Saxophone, spelled weird, I think, right? Saxophone? Looks like an alien ship for the O. That's the way I draw my O's, it's an alien ship. No evening lives this week? Nice country, America, huh? So back in the day, it was cool. K-Way used to do a live at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time. At night, it was a lot of fun, good crowd, good information, but Times change, things move on. It was fun while it lasted though, you know? Good times, you know? Gosh, this is nothing here. That's a cool shirt. I'm not gonna get it, there's no value here, but Dublin Rugby Union. K-Way says, says hi to YouTube. So if you're not able to catch this whole thing, I'll put the whole recording up on YouTube. That'll drop tomorrow morning, 9.15 a.m. You can check that out. Door-to-door -door thrift action. If this one doesn't hit, we'll just go to another store after this. At least they're stocking. But this place, these racks are super, super empty. Each week, the last three weeks, they've actually had less and less inventory. Just understaffed. They're doing their best. They're good people. Even the manager is out stalking right now. That's cool. I respect it. Seems like a lot of the same low-end brands. Yes, because they just haven't been stalking enough. So a lot of the stuff that's still here is stuff that's been sitting here for a month or so. So it's been picked over you know, time and time and time and time and time and time again, including by me. Here we go. This might be a pickup here. North Face short sleeve, not crazy good inventory, but decent stuff. Size XL. We'll pick that up. Feels like a cotton blend. So we're starting to get some stuff in this little cart here. Fill up this IKEA bag. What do you think of the brand's Psycho Bunny? Great brand. I'm glad you found a couple of those. It's a good one. I've only found that once before. And that's been a long time. Psycho Bunny, really expensive stuff new. Southern Proper, that's nothing, right? Nice, nice quality shirt though. Nike T. It's kind of cool, like a retro Nike logo on it. T-shirt's torched. Oh, pardon me, I'm sorry. Uh, maybe get, if I can back out, I can put this out of the way. I don't know that both of these carts will fit. How's that? Oh, you're fine. You're doing great. Only four sacks, one Western sold for no money. Okay, thanks for doing that research. Appreciate that. They are stocking, stocking, stocking today. How much would this sell that North Face for? It's probably like low 20s on that North Face. Plus shipping. Everything I list is uh, buyer pay shipping. So if I say, you know, 22 bucks, I mean 22 plus 5.95 shipping. So it'd be 27 all in. That would be a rough estimate for that North Face. Ashworth, a good golf brand. Yeah, I don't think there's any resale value to those though. Sometimes there's a difference between what is a quote unquote good brand and what is uh, happens to have high resale value and good sell through rates. Those can be different things sometimes. These are Wrangler. 
I usually don't pick up like button up wranglers. I usually pick up the pearl snaps, but here's a modern one. This is like a kind of like an outdoory. I don't know, I might actually pick that up because it's a 3XL. And a nice pattern this time of year, short sleeve like that. Even for 15 bucks. I might get 15 bucks for that, but sometimes I just pick up stuff to see how it'll go. I won't lose money on that shirt. But by picking up borderline items like that, it lets me be more informed so I can share that with you. Ooh, that's not borderline. Yeah, 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 that's cool. Look at that. So, on a Puma tag, I sold a few of these before. Scuderia Ferrari. So that's the racing Ferrari. It was a racing team. Ferrari Racing, Scuderia Ferrari. Really cool with that logo, that big hit down there. On the back, you got the Italian flag up by the shoulder. Really cool shirt. Really cool shirt. Sold a couple of those in the past. All right, we're gonna have to pivot. This is all scrubs. There's money to be made in scrubs, but we're not gonna play that game today. We're gonna pivot. We'll go back to that aisle where we have some more space to operate. We're gonna go through some jeans here. We're also gonna go through long sleeve shirts. We have a lot of long sleeve shirts to go through. We're gonna skim through some shoes too. I find shoes maybe once out of every three times I come here. Maybe today's that day. Right now we're gonna go through jeans, pants, and we're gonna skim these pretty quick. I'm looking for jeans, particularly in big sizes. I'm looking for golf pants, hiking pants. Looking for wool pants, I'm looking for corduroy. Looking for all sorts of brands. Not that one though. If you have questions, just drop them down below in the chat. If I don't get to them, there's a ton of really smart resellers. People who run bigger businesses than I do, who know more than I do, and that are probably nicer, better dressed, good to their families, just awesome people. They'll get to your questions, they'll respond. I missed some questions. I'm sorry. Appreciate 203 of you sharing some time with me this afternoon while I'm just doing my work. You might be asking, why do I do this? Well, because I know there's other people out here who are resellers too. They're trying to grow their business. So I want to share as much information, tips, tricks, brands, beyond the brand, things to look for. I want to share that. I also know there's a bunch of people out there who have been thinking about, man, how do I like make just a little bit more money uh, I, mean, I want to catch up on bills or I want this year to be the year that I can get ahead or this is the year I want to kind of have my own my own thing. I like my job, but I kind of want to have my own thing on the side, start my own, I don't know, maybe your own store, maybe start creating your own content about it too, sharing with the world what it's like to be an entrepreneur. This content's for you too. Anybody can do this job. You can get started with this, a business like this. I think I started with like 125 bucks. Here's some Levi's 40 by 32s. I like Levi's that are non-blue. I pick up blue ones too, don't get me wrong. But the non-blues tend to have less competition and oftentimes a better sell-through rate. So these are nice. I particularly like black and gray ones. This is a big size too, so here we go. 40 by 32. The bigger sizes generally sell a little bit better for me. And I'll pick up sizes all the way up. The biggest pair I've ever picked up is 60s. And those sold really quick. So for me, the bigger, the better. Full-time, I'm kind of, this is my main source of income. I'm kind of like half-time with it at this point because I'm working on some other things in the background. But it has been my primary source of income for more than two years now. I left my full-time, my last full-time position or last jobby job, I left back in December of 2020. And this was full time for me for the more than a year. And then I started picking up some other things, working on my re, my uh, real estate kind of game right now, trying to find some investment properties that we can rent here in Asheville or Asheville, not so specific Asheville, but Western North Carolina more broadly here in the mountains. Let me know down below in the chat. Have you been to Western North Carolina? You've been to Asheville? What's this brand here? Refuge. Is that anything? These are distressed. That was a crazy distressed. 
Is that anything? Refuge? I don't recognize that label. It says 24 on the tag. Started with 125 also. Though. So that's the magic number. Two people did started with 125 bucks, so that's the number. 125. That's all you need. Where do you sell? eBay, Poshmark, Depop, Mercari, Grailed, and Facebook Marketplace. I think that's all of them. Coming up on my five-year anniversary. July will be five years of doing this. Started as a side hustle for me. I had a full-time job. I had a great full-time job. I started doing this on the side. It's kind of an entrepreneur outlet. I had another business too. I was a a career coaching business where I work with people who are going through career change. I don't think I'm going to pick up these bean, LL beans unless they're a big size. 38 by 30. They're probably only going to sell for like 20 bucks, but I'm going to pay five for them. Jeans slow down for the summertime unless you're buying like premium stuff sells year round, but the mediocre stuff when it's out of season slows down a good bit. So LL bean is mediocre. This ain't mediocre though. Seven for all mankind, relax fit jeans. They're gonna want $4.99 on these. <clears throat> Excuse me. Been talking a lot today. <clears throat> they don't want you to take your water in here, you know. We're gonna pick these up. It says 38 on this tag here. Oh, it does say tag right there. Yeah, size 38. So a bigger size to me, 38 and up is big sizes. Big sizes sell better for me. I love beans too. I sell a ton of the little bean. But a lot of it tends to be mediocre inventory. <clears throat> There's some LL Bean that's really good. I like selling the flannels, especially like quilted flannels. The LL Bean pants that are flannel lined or fleece lined, those sell really well. Chamois shirts are a great thing to sell from LL Bean. Barn jackets. But just kind of the regular stuff tends to just be really crowded market. Tons of competition. I'm a new home project manager, but been reselling for 10 years. Dave, I'm going to correct your sentence there. I love that. I'm a new home project manager and have been reselling for 10 plus years. No but. You can do both. But implies like there's a problem. There's something wrong with that. That's no but. That's and. Sorry, I'm not like correcting you, correcting you. I'm just suggesting. That use the and language. It's prouder language. <laughs> yeah, you feel me, Dave. I'm not trying to like push you around. Thanks for the follow, Alyssa. Thanks, Gina. Riveted by Lee. Oh, it's a, it's a Lee brand. All right, let's pick up the pace, Chris. Let's go, let's go. Enough chitty chat, right? Be more MD. Thanks for the follow. Is MD, is that Maryland? Or is that medical doctor? Thanks everyone for sharing some time with me. I like corduroys, but I don't like Roundtree and York. Maryland it is. Welcome aboard, Martles. Thank you for the follow. If you're not following, why not give me a follow? I do this every Tuesday, 1 p.m. Eastern time. Go live at the thrift store, door to door, show you exactly what I'm doing. This is how I make a living. This is how I pay the rent. Life is good pants? Oh, that's something. I've never heard of these before. Oh, they're shorts. I've never seen these before. They're like capris or short. What do you even call these? Let's see if they're men's or women's. What do you think about them? life is good? Shorts. Super long shorts. Didn't know they made pants. Well, apparently they forgot they made pants because they were making pants and then they stopped about two thirds of the way down and they said, we're not making pants anymore. That's what happened here. I was there. I was there when they were making them. They were like, we're going to make pants. No, we're not. We're just going to stop right here. We're going to hem it and we're going to put this little drawstring on it. And there you go. And people will like it. It looked like a pickup to me. That's what happened. That was actually there. That was actually there. What's the size on these? Does anybody know anything about these? I can't look stuff up on eBay. But by the way, this is really easy to learn because you can just go into your eBay mobile app. You can search for, I mean, you could do it right now if you wanted to. You could put in life is good. I don't know what you call these shorts. Life is good shorts. And put in like a check, I guess, maybe as a pattern. And the size here. And you can just 
take a look at what they're selling for currently, but you can also then filter it for sold and used, and you can see what the used ones have been selling for over the past 90 days on eBay. Anybody can do this. Some listings for 20 goes for 12 plus shipping, okay. Some sales for even 20 plus shipping, their brand new t-shirts are around 30. Yeah, I sell their t-shirts sometimes, they usually sell for about 20 bucks. I don't know, I'll maybe look these up, Bermuda short, there you go, okay. There you go, see I'm learning with y'all, I need y'all, I appreciate you looking stuff up for me. Hopefully you don't feel like I'm pushing you around and saying, look these up for me. Shoot, gotta put you down. Capri's sold on Posh for 20 minutes, okay. Is that a Capri, is it a Bermuda? Or is it just a pant? I think it's just a pant that they quit in the middle. They're like, you know what? We thought pants were a good idea, but shoot, this is a lot of work. Let's just stop now and... That's what the stripe pattern is. What's the... Oh, window pane, yeah. A window pane check. All right, let's go back to this aisle that we're at. We're gonna be a little herky-jerky here. We were in the shirts, we stopped. Then we were in the pants, we stopped. And we're going back to the shirt so I can finish off this aisle. telling y'all about oranges and yellows, especially just solids. It's a size XL, it's a short sleeve. Uh, if this was December, I'm not picking this up. I still might not. Uh, Blake is a relaxed fit, that's, that's what that model is. So this is a size XL, it probably measures like a 2X. I don't know, I'll probably get it. It's the right time of year to be picking up mediocre short sleeve inventory. And, and, that is mediocre just because it's, it's short sleeve, it's cotton, it's solid, and it's a color that's like, uh, You sold that pair for $24.99, is that including shipping or plus shipping? How much the polo shirts and the thrift go for you? Totally depends on the brand, the size, the pattern, the material. So if you have like a more specific question, I could probably get that. What's this here? Left Coast Tee. For some reason, I've been finding really valuable t-shirts that I've never heard of before. Is this an example? Does anyone know this? Rust Orange is in the spring, is it? West Orange, West Orange is in. Does anyone know this? Life Coast Tee. Is this one of these like sneaky, valuable t-shirt brands that I've been finding lately? I found one yesterday you might not have heard of before. It's called Raining Champ. It's made in Canada, and it's a plain t-shirt like this, and it sells for like... 25 to 30 dollars for a plain freaking t-shirt is that the case here left coast t is this one of those sneaky good brands it's got this little logo down here i don't know what that is is that a hammer i always make buyer pay shipping gotcha i do too except for mercari i do free shipping and jack up the price because mercari shipping prices are too high it's 100 percent pima cotton which is a good sign New for 110 yes, $25 on Poshmark. Left Coast Tea, yes, goodbye. See, what did I tell you? I told you we're going to find a new brand that I've never heard of today. We're going to bring it home. We're going to sell it and make money, and you're going to be the ones doing the research. So you tip me off on this. Left Coast Tea, sell for 20 to 25 bucks on Poshmark. Boom, thank you. Brittany, appreciate you. User 6983, if I can send you gifts right now, I would, but I don't think I can send you gifts. Um, thank you for that. So that's that little logo down there. See, just be curious when you're out here. You see something you haven't heard of before, kind of a funky little stitch right there. I'm like, you know, it feels quality, and it turns out it is Pima cotton. Nice job, guys. It's right. I passed on the shirt like the last three times I've been here. It's a 3XLT Cabela's. I would pick this up, but look at how bad the condition it is. How did, what happened? What happened? Is this person okay? Look at the. Let's say they got run over by a car. It's like they got run over by a train. That was a bad freaking day. This is, I keep passing on this one too. That's all stand up. Thank y'all for that. That's fun to learn new brands, ain't it? Anybody can do this. Just be curious. When you come across something you haven't come across, look it up. Now, for me, I'm going to 
rip by a lot of these things, it's because I've looked them up before. You know, like I've looked up George before. I've looked up, I haven't looked that up. I don't know what Miss Look is, but I've, you know, I've looked up Tommy Hilfiger polos before. I know, so I can just pass them really quick. But that just takes time. Oh, check this out. These are super valuable. You. Six bucks. So these are zero, and the, these are all about like a zero drop running shoe, so it's going to mimic kind of more of like a barefoot style running, but they call them zero. It's a zero drop, but the brand is zero. This is a good brand. Gosh, I haven't found these in a long time. Get the Lebanese orange, like the shirt, the Tommy shirt, is that what you're saying? Left Coast T, $75 and thank you. I tried to sell Tommy Hilfiger, no luck, why? Uh, because this is just a super saturated brand and it's been sold at department stores at deep discounts for like generations. There's just so much of it out there and uh, it's so common and it's always really cheap new. Like, real, you know, look at it. Here's another one right on cue. Another Tommy Hilfiger polo shirt. It's just uh, an endless amount of those. So when supply of something is so, so high like that, it's just got to have to push down the price. All right, so we cleared all the short sleeves. We cleared some of the jeans. Orange is a in color. Rust orange, cool. Yeah, I'm not gonna pick up that Tommy. I don't care what color it was. It could be gold. And I'm not gonna pick it up because those Tommy plain modern polos just don't have any value. There's too many of them listed. Could you sell that online for six or seven dollars? Sure, it has value. We passed on this jacket last week. This is my favorite aisle, by the way. I don't know if they've restocked it at all since we were here last week. Was that last week? Was that two weeks ago? I can't keep it all straight. This is my favorite aisle, though. This is where I make most dollars per unit. I will pick up vintage Tommy Hilfiger button-ups if they're really unique, like a big spell out, huge flag, something that makes it really unique, something that makes it so I don't have it a thousand other, when I say a thousand, 10,000 competitors of the exact same shirt. You see what I mean? It has to be something that'll make it unique and therefore less competition. There's so much of that stuff out there. I love blazers too. Classic never goes out of style. Are you talking about me? I don't know. When you say statements like that, you know, I don't, I can't connect the dots. Am I classic and I never go out of style? Who's that? Charlie? Charlie, appreciate the compliment. You're awesome. Hi, everybody. Man behind the mask. All right, we got work to do. Never mind the games. Top five blazer brands. Everyone, drop it down in the chat your favorite brands of blazers to pick up. Drop them down below. It doesn't matter what my favorite are. We got a bunch of smart resellers in here. They'll drop down some brands for you. Will we find one. Passed that one last week. I do pick up some chaps, but not those ones. I look for really big sizes and unique ones in chaps too, and those will sell. They'll sell for actually really good money and fast. If you find the right ones, those weren't the right ones. That's not the right. Okay. Got a few more blazers. There's always time for friendly games. It's right. Charlie, you're all right in my book. I don't have a book. But if I did, you'd be all right in my I don't pick up blazers in warm weather times. So blazers sell that slow down for me a little bit, uh, like late March, April into May, and then they pick up again for the summertime because people go to summertime weddings and stuff like that. So I notice actually a bump in the summer after a little slowdown in the spring. And this will be my, really only my third spring selling them. I started picking up blazers in uh, 2021 January is when I started selling suits and blazers. So. Only two and a half years into my journey, so it's my third spring, but it always tends to slow down a little bit in the spring for me, and then it picks back up. But of course, that always depends. Just because I say mine slow down and pick up doesn't mean yours will, because we might have different pricing strategies. We might be picking up different inventory. We have different seller, what's the word, uh, reputations or ratings. We might have different re repeat customers, you know, so... I always try to temper what I say happens in my store and saying, like, that might happen in your store, but it might happen a little bit differently, too. 
What's your favorite blazer brand? Gosh, I don't know if I could pick just one. Um, if I could just find one blazer brand for the rest of my life, just one. Hmm. I don't know. I'm trying to think of like the really high end stuff right now. One brand. Is this paper and crane? Feels cheap. Go win and blend. I, I really like Canali. I'm picking up YSLs. I like picking up Xenia or Menagildo Xenia. I might pick those up the rest of my life. I don't know. Those are a few for you. But again, it's always beyond the brand too. It's like, well, the pattern matters, the material matters, the size matters. So some of the things we look for in blazers are bigger sizes, absolutely. We're looking for unplain patterns. Solid sell, but plaid, check, even stripe tends to sell better for me. And we're looking for things like silk and linen, because those are lower supply. Wool's good too, but I'll take a silk one or a wool silk blend over a straight wool. 99% of the time. There's exceptions to every rule. Look at the shirt. Mission Playground Men's Medium. Look at that shirt. It's kind of cool. Two Wheels of Justice Mission Playground. I don't know anything about this, but it's kind of a cool looking shirt. I love that giant graphic like that. Been buying blazers lately. They do not fit same. Bro, hit the women's section. Uh, Jason Hayes is looking for some new crop tops, so we're going to go over to the women's section a little bit. Don't worry, Jay Hayes, I got you. We'll find you some mesh tanks and some crop tops. I know this time of year you really like those. Guys, if you're not following Jason Hayes, Jason Hayes is the guy. He's my reseller sensei. He taught me 96.7% of everything I know. So if you want to know the other 3.3%, go over and follow Jason Hayes. He'll show you what it is. And we'll get him some crop tops and some mesh tanks. He's got great content. He's been putting out content on YouTube. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think for five years, putting out content on YouTube, YouTube about this very topic. Bro's got a PhD in eBay. How do I buy your selections? You can, uh, all my links are, if you click up at Chris at Peak, click on my name there. That'll bring you to my website. You can see all the stores that I sell on, all six of them. And if you're a reseller too, I have a bunch of links for packing materials, tools that I use to help me with my business. Kind of an interesting Rangor piece. Is that the B from, is that the Bellagio B? What does that be? Why does that look familiar? If anyone knows what that B is. I usually don't pick up these like cotton Wranglers. It's an older tag, extra long tail, six and a half. It's a button up. Oh, wait a minute. NFT Fall 1996. So, okay, I don't think I'm going to pick this up, but um, I usually pick up Western Pearl Snaps in Wrangler. I will pick up button ups if they're unique and vintage. This one's just not really unique. But if that had some cachet to it, I might do it. But I think, I think the NFTA Fall 1996, maybe some conference or something, or trade association, TA. So now I'm just curious. I'm not going to buy it, but what's the NFTA? 1996. Was that a good trade show or something? Is that the best year for it? Was that the year that you crush your speech at the trade show? It does kind of look like the Blasio logo. I don't think it is. Yeah, I don't think it is either. But it's reminiscent of that, you know? So we've already found one new brand today. One brand I've never heard of before sells for good money. And yesterday I found I brought home four brands that I'd never taken home before. Three of them I had never heard of. That's just being curious at the thrift store. So you see me going fast. I'm ripping through. I know Eagle's worth no money. I know Gold Label's worth no money or almost no money. So I'm going through these really fast. I know Land's End is borderline pass in most cases. I Zod I pass, Stafford I pass. I know this because I've looked this stuff up over the years. But you can go to the thrift store and you can look up any of this stuff on your eBay machine, on your phone. You could look it up. I pass on a lot of Woolrich, but I don't think I'm going to pass on this one. Unless we find a flaw. So we got some corduroy action. It is a modern-ish tag. It's not vintage. But corduroy? The value on a lot of this stuff has gone down. but It's definitely got vintage vibes, if you know what I mean. 
what do you call that corduroy pattern? It's kind of like double ridge, big and little. It's interesting. Niagara Frontier Transportation Authority. That was probably just an amazing conference. Can you imagine? The Northern Tasmanian Football Association. Now this is like my favorite question in the chat. We need to know this. It's a football thing in Texas. Oh. Isn't it a turkey federation? Oh my gosh. National Foosball Table Association. This is so good. I need to know the answer. NFTA, North America. Yeah, I thought uh, I thought that was NAFTA, like N-A-F-T-A. But is it just N-F, Kelly? I don't know. I need to know this now. Soundtrack. Yeah, this is my personal soundtrack. Thank you for the follow. Have you picked up Seven Diamonds? I haven't. I don't think I pick up that brand. Should I? I don't know. Do a quick spin of shoes while we're back here. They were stocking shoes, so that's a good thing. Nothing, 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 nothing. What are you? You're nothing. What are you? You're nothing. Sometimes you just pick up shoes and boots and you can just tell by the feel of them. You don't even have to look at the brand. So I was saying like, you can, anybody can do this stuff. Like I didn't, I don't have like a background in fashion. I've never worked in a retail store that sold clothes before. Um, I just knew a little bit about outdoor clothing because that's kind of my game. So, yeah, just go to the thrift store, you be curious, you look stuff up, you watch some YouTubers or some TikTokers that do this for a living, kind of write down some brands, and then you go in, just go to the thrift store and start looking stuff up. Calvin Klein, no. Lee Classic Fit, no. You start looking this stuff up, and over time, it becomes really quick. Mossimo, no. But like anything, uh, you're going to be slower at first, you're going to have more questions, you're going to be unsure, you're going to make some mistakes, just like any new job, any new business. But there is a pathway, and there's a community of people here on TikTok to support you too. National Freight Transport Association, I was half listening. That's got to be it. That's awesome. Thank you, Christopher Jason, for the follow. Thanks, Casey, for the follow. Thanks, Volleyball Mama, for the follow. What was on the sleeve? Uh, NFTA, if that's the one you're talking about. That's what we're guessing here. So one of the brands I thought was worth money when I first started reselling, I probably picked it up on my first trip to the thrift store, was Nordstrom. I might still have some of those in my inventory, by the way. So you will make mistakes, and that's okay. Most of them you'll still sell anyway. You just won't make good profit or you'll break even or something. You usually don't lose money on bad buys, you know? Unless you like way overpaid. Oh, here's a good brand. So mountain khaki, the shirts aren't all that great. I still pick up some of them, but the pants and the shorts do pretty well. I found a pair of shorts yesterday at the thrift, actually, and here's a pair of pants. The funny thing is, could be a coincidence, but the shorts I picked up yesterday were the same color and they were 38s. Donated by the same person, sent to two different thrift stores, I don't know, or just two different people that wear mountain khakis. That's probably the better ex explanation. Mountain Khaki is a brand that you'll find more commonly in a, in a place like here, like Asheville. Kind of mountain brand, Mountain Khaki, you get the idea. I'd find it a lot when I was in Denver too. All right, what was I doing? I wanted to do these shirts, but that dude was in the way. So we're gonna go back to the shirts and we'll go back to the pants. So Mountain Khaki, good one to look for. The pants and the shorts do better, especially the shorts this time of year, do better than the uh, than the shirts do for me. I don't know. Jason Hayes would say no yellow shirts, but Jason isn't here anymore. He laughs. He just stopped in to say hi. I don't like size large either. Plain. So many of those will be listed. Probably find that here in Utah too. Absolutely. I've thrifted in Utah before. I've thrifted in Ogden before. You find a lot of that same stuff, the kind of mountain, outdoor, recreation kind of brands. That's how I got started. And then just started going to the thrift store, doing research. And by research, I don't mean like sitting on a computer doing stuff. I mean like literally looking up, is saddle bread worth money? I'd go into eBay, search for saddle bread, 2XL plaid cotton shirt, see what pops up, sort that for sold, 
So I'm looking only at sales and sort it for used. I'm looking only at used ones because these are all used. And see what the value is. See what the sell through rate is. Ooh, this might be a buy right here. You see it right there. You know what that is. So there's some good LL Bean. There's some not so good LL Bean. This is good LL Bean. So these ones are super easy to identify because I think all of them actually do say chamois cloth right there. This is a vintage yellow bean tag. Made in the USA. XL tall, great size. Those tall sizes sell better than the, than the regular sizes. So this is a great size, great seller. Strange color. It's got some wear on it, but it's vintage, you know? So somebody who buys this is going to be looking for something that's got some wear on it. Cool shirt. What color would you call this? I'm honestly asking. It's in good shape. I sell these. Uh, this will probably go in the $35 plus shipping range. And this will weigh over a pound. So this will ship at uh, USPS priority. I'll charge $8.95 for shipping on this bad boy. But typically around $35 bucks to smaller sizes might be around more like $30. But this is an XLT, so that's a great size. Oatmeal, buckskin, pale yellow, or tan. I would call that color chamois, there you go. Yeah, it does kind of look like a chamois, like you could dry your car with the shirt. And that's, yeah. Thank you all for all those. Some of you might not know either, I'm colorblind too, so it is difficult for me to distinguish some colors. Doesn't mean I see black and white, but you know what I mean. I struggle with some colors. What is your location? I'm at the Asheville, I'm at the Fletcher, North Carolina Goodwill. You ever been to the buy the pound goodwills i don't go to those it's just not my thing i don't really like being around that many people in close contact unless i'm listening to like good live good live loud music and i have an ipa or two in my hands otherwise being around that many people in close proximity would i don't know i just don't like that kind of thing you'll see me when i'm in like a aisle like this and if like two other people came into this aisle or even one sometimes i'll just go to another aisle and then i'll come back What's this thing? Does anyone know this? Here. Let me unzip this stupid thing. This is not easy. Well, that's the thing. I don't want to get arrested when I'm going to freaking Goodwill. I mean, if I got it, I got it. But anyone know this? Lachlan? I don't think it's anything. It feels like decent quality anyway. British inspired Lachlan. Anyone know about this? It's a quarter zip. It's cotton. It's also stained, right? No? Yeah, it's also stained, so we're not going to pick it up. But I am curious, is this a new brand that we should all be on the lookout for? Lachlan Quarter Zip. It's a great shirt, I would buy that. Yeah, that chamois shirt's sick. People love those, it's so classic. Sometimes vintage in clothing just means old, by the way. And sometimes it means classic and just people love it. Um, and it was worth more money. Sometimes it just means an old shirt. What's masked? Is this anything? So this is a really soft flannel shirt. It's a size 2XL. That's a nice shirt right there. I just don't know if it, it's quality, like if it has any resale value. What was the Saddlebred shirt? Long sleeve comps 10 to 25 on Poshmark. Uh, Saddlebred, I think I know exactly what shirt you're talking about. I think it's this one. Look at that. Saddlebred 2XL. Just a cotton poly spandex blend. These don't really do well for me. Really crowded market. And uh, if you do well with them, that's awesome. Like I don't disrespect that. There's different models and stuff, but for me, a Stafford button down is gonna have a, a low enough sell through rate that I'm not gonna play with it. A combination of low sell through rate and comps that hover in the teens for me is just a combination I'm not looking for. Lachlan, thumbs down, 66 new. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. All right, so we got pushed off our game. We're gonna go back. Uh, anyone look up the mass? I can't look up stuff right now because you're on the screen, but $16 sold in April eBay, Lachlan quarter zip. Thank you so much, Bush Mama. I'm gonna pass on that one. Not good, not good on the mast. It doesn't look like a, you know, sometimes you just look at tags and you're like, I feel like that's a good tag. I don't think that's true on mass, but it, it's a nice flannel shirt. I'd rock it. It's not my size though either, it's a 2XL. So here's a bunch of Tommy Hill figures. Some people would tell me like, pick up those Tommies. I'm not gonna. Modern tag, 2XL, Argyle, V-neck, striped, 
crew neck, striped, crew neck. I'm going to pass on those. If they were new tags, I'd pick them up. Another saddle bread, I'm going to pass on that. Another Tommy, XL sweater, mock neck, zip, lands in sweater pass. One listed for 34 to 20. Cool, thank you. Any um, any solds? Can someone give me like a sold price including the shipping price to you? Like if it's like $30 including shipping or... Because remember, looking at, looking at listed does help in some regards, but looking at what they're actually selling for tends to be a stronger way to do it. Anyone know this grand and green? Ever heard of this? Grand and green. I'm curious on this one. None sold. Good shape. One listed 34, 20 unsold. Okay. Mass 9 on eBay. I saw two listed for 20. Okay. I'll probably pass on the mass then. Thank y'all for looking that up. Uh, see, anybody can do this. You just need to look at things up on eBay, see what their recent sales over the last 90 days is. Anyone can do it. Anyone know this one? Grand and green. It's a very lightweight cotton. Feels high quality though. Grand and green. Might be a blend. It's super, super lightweight. 100% rayon. There you go. So it's a rayon, grand and green. Thanks for the follow, Corey. And there's no way to know all the brands. We'll just you could do a lifetime of this, and you'll still be able to find a new brands. So you just got to be curious and know how to look things up. All Saints is a great brand. I passed on this shirt like three different times because it's, it's beat. It's wrecked. Terrible shape. Here's another brand when I first started reselling I thought was worth money. Timberland. The boots are great. The clothing, not so much. This is a rugby shirt. Somebody could make an argument that this might be a buy. I have sold some Timberland before. I've sold some cool, like, unique jackets and stuff. But Timberland's a brand that was born in New Hampshire. I think they're owned by a bigger company now. But I think they were born in Stratum, New Hampshire is where they were headquartered. They might still be. I don't know, actually. Maybe a Timberland rugby would be worth it. It's got a couple of stains here and there. I think I'm going to pass on it, but I'm curious. No on the wall. Okay, no on the green thing. See, aren't they tricky now with these logos now? They try to make them look like... That looks like a... That looks like a marine layer tag, doesn't it? Kind of similar style. They're, like, literally copying that. That's what these brands do. Where were we? Timberland Rugby? I don't think, I think it's a pass, but I'm kind of curious now. I don't come across those a lot. Timberland is usually a, you know, it's it's a good brand, don't get me wrong. It's just not a great resale brand unless you pick up very specific items, like the boots, for instance. Green and Green Walmart. Thank y'all. Appreciate it. I know some people have, like, logged out of the live and they're just coming back. Don't realize that we've got our Grand and Green We've got our grand and green solution. I appreciate everybody going to look. It's good practice, right? If you're getting new to this, if you're new, just getting into the game, look stuff up. Anyone can do it. Look at the pattern on this thing. I don't know this brand. I don't think it's worth anything. Luke Matten Design Fashion. Look at the pattern on that. That is amazing. Super cool. 20 bucks for the rugby. Okay. Plus shipping. Here's a Columbia. I usually pass on these, but this is the time of year where I can make a couple bucks on a quickish flip. Look at that color on that. So a little Omni shade. This is a fishing shirt. Very on brand for Columbia. Uh, a lot of pulls and stuff on it though. So I'm gonna pass on this one. It's a very borderline pickup. I usually don't pick them up, but I've been experimenting with them lately. That's wild, what's it made out of? It's a good question. It feels cottony. It actually kind of feels cheapish. It doesn't feel like a nice, like an elegant weave or anything. It's easy to do with two hands, but it's more fun with you on. We go, oh, 5% linen. Look at that. Fabric, cotton. Okay, so 95 cotton, 5 linen. Barely any comps. Yes on the Luke Matten. I'll look it up, man. We got one. I mean, it is such a crazy pattern. That might be really on brand for this brand, too. This might be like what people are looking for. Look at that. I'll look it up. 18 to 32 plus shipping. 
I'll look it up to you. I got enough information from y'all to uh, put that in the cart. If I'm gonna make a mistake, I'm gonna make a mistake with a loud pattern, if you know what I mean. Five to fifty on Posh. The Lachlan goes for thirty dollars. eBay, the Lachlan. Lachlan, thirty dollars on Amazon. Known for bright colors and patterns. Gotcha. Okay. I'll do some um, some double checking on that just to see if it fits with my model. I'll look at sell through rates and stuff. Thank y'all. That's all the information I needed. Sounds like it's borderline ish. Unlike that other shirt that y'all taught me about that I already forget the name of, that one didn't sound borderline. That was like, let's go, 7th Avenue. Feels like a nice shirt. Never heard of that, 7th Avenue. I don't think it's anything. Here's a Columbia. This is like a Columbia hunting. These tend to be a little bit better. CC PHG. So PFG is performance fishing gear. PHG is performance hunting gear. These tend to sell a little bit better. They're less common, less supply, less competition. Size 2XL, long sleeve. PFG, or PHG, sorry, hit on the back, and vented. So we're going to pick that one up. Man, I never find PHGs. Performance hunting gear. You sure do greatly, so routinely shop there every day. Thank you, thank you. Luke Matten looks like a traditional African clothing brand. Interesting, okay. I mean, def definitely explains like the style there for sure. It's a really cool style. All right, so we cleared those long sleeves. Did we clear, we cleared the other long sleeves. We cleared the blazers. We started on these jeans, but we stopped. Yep, and this is what, about where we stopped. I like when I can come back and like I can see where the, like the gap is where I stopped. Makes things easy. It's so hard to hang up these hangers when you, you drop a paint off the paint hanger. You need two hands to do that. Unless you're a professional. I'm not a professional. Thanks everyone for hanging out, like 238 people hanging out, watching me work, this is literally what I do, this is how I pay the bills, so it's fun to kind of do your work with 238 of your closest friends, and some new friends, appreciate people who are just jumping in for the first time. If this sort of thing is interesting to you, I do do a live every day, 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time, with my face on the screen, and we answer questions, we ship actual orders, so if you're saying to yourself, this stuff ain't gotta sell, what's this guy talking about, people don't buy this crap. You can come into my morning live, 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time, see exactly what's selling, exactly how long it took to sell, exactly how much I paid for it, how much people are paying for it, how much I'm paying in shipping and fees, and how much, of course, the profit at the end of the day. Truth and Theory. Did we talk about this brand once before? It's a really small size pair of women's jeans. Truth and Theory, I don't think there's anything here. Julie, thanks for the follow, appreciate it. What's up, Shaw? How do you deal with getting that thrift store smell out of clothes? If it smells bad, I just throw it in the wash. But I usually don't have to. Not all clothes have that. All right, so we got another pants aisle. We still got some shoes to look through. I might skim through. Did we already look at this PFG? We already went through this aisle, but this PFG was not there. So we're going to pick this up. This is a vented fishing shirt. PFG is performance fishing gear from Columbia. Big size 2XL. Actually be a pretty good seller in that big size. This time of year, people are looking for those. I'm not going to get rich off that, but I'll make some money. Pass on True Theory comps for 15 at most. Thanks so much. Appreciate you. I would so much like someone doing all this shopping for me. <laughs> well, that's why this stuff sells, you know, because people like what they like. Um, 
Um, they don't want to pay a hundred dollars for a pair of jeans. Sorry, I had to put you down. I knocked down a pair of jeans. I didn't want to be a D and leave them on the ground. Um, they want to pay a hundred dollars for a pair of jeans, but they love that pair of jeans that they bought. They kind of wore them out. They need a replacement. They'd rather pay thirty dollars for online for that same model on eBay or Poshmark. So that's what they do. And they don't have to go shopping. I do the shopping for them, pay for the gas, and ship it out to them. It shows up on their front door. And if I did my job, if I took good pictures and measured it and described any kind of flaws or whatever well, then the person knows exactly what they're getting and they are psyched. I just passed them those Columbia's at my Goodwill Dang. Well, the reason I picked those up is so the seasonality of it. So, you know, the sell through rate on those will be a little bit higher this time of year than they will be in the winter time. That's a size 2XL on that one too. And the other one was a PHG, so performance hunting gear, which is just a lower supply item. There's just not as many of those listed. You just don't come across them very often. I can't tell you the last time I came across PHG. So Columbia is a really, really common saturated brand, if you will. But the model PHG is not so. And you can even look this stuff up if you want to right now. I'd be curious. What's the sell through rate on a PHG long sleeve fishing, I guess hunting shirt really, but a vented shirt, PFG, size XL, long sleeve shirt. What's the sell through rate on those? I haven't looked up the sell through rate on those in probably years because I haven't found one. So we talk about it all the time. You know what I'm gonna say if you've been following me, I'm gonna say look beyond the brand, look at the sizes, the materials, the models, the patterns. All those things matter in the formula of what, this, what the, the value is and how quickly they will sell. Did we do this rack? I don't think we did this rack. We did because it's this refuge. Yep, we did that rack. I'm glad I remembered that that quickly. We'll skim some shoes now. I think we've done pretty good today. Sometimes I forget... I lose track of how well we're doing because I'm talking to y'all and thrifting at the same time. Men's size 10M. Cole Hans. These don't look like money Cole Hans, but they are in good shape. Could someone do me a huge favor? And like, unless you want to do it like 10 of y'all, you don't all have to do it, but could someone look up that model number? It's c 266 Oh, that's triple six one. C two three six is one. Someone look that up for Cole Han for me. Let's see what they're selling for. You don't all have to do it. Someone can just raise their hand and go do it. So that someone could be the volunteer. I'll leave that up there just in case. C two triple six one. Somebody look that as up. So when people tell you like, hey, all Cole Han is a pickup, uh, you might want to, yeah. I'm not going to say you don't want to listen to that person, but you want to keep listening to that person, hear what else they have to say. You got to look at the condition. These do have some wear on them. I don't know. They are pretty worn. If they're worth a lot of money, which I don't think they are, even with that wear, that would lower the price of them because of the wear. That would lower the market value. But they would have to be like really worth a lot of money. That Cole Han is 35. Cool. So this would be a good pickup for 35 bucks because I would pay. Um, I think these are seven here, six ninety nine. So pay six ninety nine. I could flip them into thirty five plus shipping. That would be a good pickup. And on the top, they're in pretty good condition. But that little bit of wear means I'm gonna have to sell it at the bottom of the market. So I'm gonna go more like twenty five bucks because other people are gonna have it listed in better condition for thirty five. So I gotta go under. So for me, that's really not worth it on this shoe. Um, you also open yourself up to a higher percentage of items that will be returned if you start playing in like the war out category more often. Because even though you put photoed them really well um, and described them really well, somebody will still may return them on you because of that condition. So just know that when you dip down into the lower condition area, they're not all going to get returned, but the return rate will go up. My typical return rate is 2.5%. 
So on that, if I picked this up and sold it, I would expect my return rate to be more like 7.5% or something like that, right? It's just more likely that it'll get returned. Not 100%, just a little bit more. Still low at 7.5%. But you just have to calculate that into your math. Is that worth picking up to resell for 25 bucks if I'm paying seven, if now I've just gone from a 2.5% chance that it gets returned to a 7.5% chance? For me, I'm gonna do the math that I'm not gonna flip it. I also don't sell all that many shoes, so my game's more set up for clothing. So if I'm gonna have to go and list shoes, I need to be able to make money on them. More than that margin. We'll keep skimming shoes for a little bit here. We're through, I think, all the clothes. I'll double check some things. We might go over to hard goods if y'all want. We'll recruit, remember this live is for you, not for me. So if y'all want me to go over to hard goods, I can do it. Some knockoff Crocs right here. Look at that. Made in China on there instead of the Crocs logo. That's funny. Kids knockoff Crocs. Things like this catch my eye, but these are kids and they're definitely like not nice brand. I don't even have to look at them. You can just tell by the materials. But those bean boots are great. Those duck boots. Purses, I don't really play in the purse game. It's a good game to play in if you know your stuff. There's a lot, there's a higher percentage of purses faked than anything else. Jeans is a second, or uh, jerseys would be second on that in terms of like counterfeit stuff. I know how to recognize counterfeit jerseys. I don't know how to recognize purses. Could I research that and get good at it? Yep. I just choose not to. There's so many things that you can make money off of in this business and you don't have to do all of them. I think at first I felt the pressure, like I need to learn every category. And I did learn a lot of categories. And I think it's a good idea to be conversational in a lot of different categories. Electronics, glassware, um, China, uh, kitchenware. And if you all want to go over there, we can look at that stuff. Somebody said yes, so that's all I needed, one vote. It's valuable to somebody, so it's worth my time to go over there. Thanks for the follow, Jenica, Mary, and Ramon. Stamdy, thanks for sharing the live. Nice compliment. I appreciate that. Their golf shoes so well. I forget what brand we're talking about now. Could I trust you? Um, so I'm conversational in this category. I'm not an expert in this category, but I know a few things to look for, and I always consistently look for them. One of the things you know, I always look for Revere wear. I can already see a Revere wear from here. I can see a Faber wear from here. I can see a Calphalon from here without even bending down. Let's do it. So first off, Revere wear. I always know these because this little handle here, see that little hook? You have to make that noise when you do it. See that? And on the bottom right there, Revere wear. It's upside down, but Revere wear. They don't all have that copper bottom, but a lot of them do. This one they want four bucks for. This is like a two quart soft saucepan, maybe a two and a half quart saucepan. Not a ton of value here. This is like a 15 to 20 dollar item if it had the lid it doesn't have the lid we might be able to look around and find the lid but without the lid it has less value it's four bucks it's actually pretty clean i wouldn't have to actually really do much work on this one the bottom does look a little warped though see that so actually i would pass on this even if it had the lid and even if it was a buck because that warped bottom ruins the value calflon can resell well too you can see the brand right there calflon but this pan is just beat, so I'm gonna pass on that one. So it's good to be, I think, conversational a lot of these different brands, but don't feel like you have to go and find everything in the thrift store. I'll pass on some stuff that I know I can make money on because I'm like, I just don't really wanna list it or ship it. Perfect green new wave. This just feels really high quality. I don't know that brand at all that just feels really quality. It's kind of scratched up on the inside, but this is like one of those ceramic pans, I think, like one of those green pans. Um, I'm gonna pass on it, I think. What about Tupperware mixing bowls? Yeah, a lot of Tupperware. That's worth, that's a, 
thing worth le learning. So this is that Faberware that I mentioned. It's kind of scraped off, but this is a Faberware. The reason I know this is a Faberware from 10 feet away is because this has the hook too, just like that Revereware over there. Notice the different shape in the handle though. This little, whoop, that little circle pattern right there with the hook, that's Faberware. That stuff can be worth some money sometimes too, but uh, a little bit less so than Revereware. It's not as desirable. Here's another Faber right there. That same exact pattern on the handle. There it is. It's kind of scraped it off, but you can see it Faberware. So it's good to be conversational and things like Pyrex, Tupperware, and all that stuff, especially if you're going to garage sales where you'll find this stuff for cheapity, cheap, cheap, cheap. I actually like selling vintage kitchen. Whistling tea kettles, there you go, those are awesome. Those remind me of being a kid. Um, this stuff I'm not so, I don't even know if I'd consider myself uh, conversational in like, uh, like home decor, that's not really my thing. Um, we were here last week, who was it? Somebody was telling me to pick up this Sanyo for 35 bucks. This resells in, in good condition with a remote for like 35 to $50 online. It's a good thing to look for. DVD, VCR combos. Generally a good thing to look for. The brand and the model does matter. The good thing about things like this is if you're, if you're first getting into this business, this is so easy to look up. Unlike clothing, where you have to like look for plaid and cotton and all these things, on here, all you have to look up is Sanyo DVW 6100. You can go do it right now, filter it for sold, filter it for used, and see what they're selling for. Um, the thing with these is the value is always going to go up if you have the remote too. This one doesn't have the remote. We could fish around. There's probably a remote bin somewhere and see if we can find it, but the other thing is it's got some damage on it and stuff too. If I could get this at a garage sale for like five bucks I could I would probably pick it up if I had confirmation from the person that it works and everything's fine and I'd ask them like how, well, how long ago was the last time you used it have you used a DVD have you you know I'd ask them like follow-up questions have you used a DVD player have you used a VHS do you have any DVDs or VHSs that I could plug this in and maybe check it out but, but generally from their answers to their questions and their confidence in it um, you can tell if this item's gonna work or not in the go in the goodwill there's no one for me to interview I don't know it could have been broken, that's why it's been donated. It, and after it was donated, it could have been dropped on its head five times in the back room, kind of like me, and it could be all damaged up. So I don't know. So for me, when I find, if I find this at the thrift store for five bucks and I can sell it for 35 online with the remote, I'm still gonna pass on this item. But it's $35, so it's really not a conversation. But um, point being, look for DVD VHS combo units and then just look up Sanyo, this. You can see what they're, they're valued for. Car stereos are another thing that are oftentimes worth picking up too. I don't have any way to test these. They want seven bucks for it. And again, I can't interview the person. Hey, tell me about this stereo. Why are you selling it? Um, and if they told me like, oh, we just put in, a, we put in an Alpine unit instead. Um, this one works just fine. We used it for six months before we replaced it, whatever, you know, then maybe I'd pick it up. I'd just look up Shaker 500. There's probably a model number back here too. You can look it up and see what it's valued. But since I can't test this item, I don't have the tools I need to test it at home. And I have no idea about the history of it because again, it could have been dropped on its head five times in the back room. I'm not going to pick something like this up for seven bucks at a thrift store. That's just me. There's other people who do it. Um, but I'm just not going to do it. Unless it's worth like $150, then maybe I'd take a chance at 7 bucks. But I'm guessing that this is not a $150 stereo. That's just a guess, but again, if you want to look it up, Shaker 500. There's a model number on here too. It's a Ford. If you all want to look that up, you can screenshot it. I'm going to walk away, but you can screenshot it and look it up if you want to for your own educational purposes. So this came out of a Ford, obviously. It's a Ford head unit. It's 150 bucks, so I'll come back and get it. We find a goodies, yeah, we find some good clothes. Now we're just playing around, surfs up. We're playing in the hard goods aisle and just kind of talking through. You know, I'm just, I'm conversational at a lot of these other categories, but I choose really not to focus on them. I know a very little bit about toys. I don't have any kids, so that's another reason I don't know much about toys. I've never bought them as adults, so I don't know what the values of are of them. And even as a kid, I don't know. I like playing sports. I like being outside and I liked uh, 
playing sports, building stuff, climbing trees, getting into fights. That's what I did. So I didn't really play a lot of games. I just don't know a lot about that stuff. Can't say no to a blazer. You might have to go through these. Because this time of year, now that spring has sprung in Asheville, people aren't looking through this stuff. The consumers aren't. And oftentimes the resellers are ignoring them. I might have to go through this section, but let's let's play in the hard goods. We might find something cool. I do play in golf too. I'm a little bit more than conversational in golf. I like selling golf. I like selling golf bags. They want 30 bucks for this bag though. It's not even a, that's not a good bag. Sorry if you own that bag. I should say it's not a valuable bag on the resale market. If you own that bag, that's awesome. These are all the same clubs that were here a week ago. Since I got to, since I moved back to Asheville in October, I have found exactly zero golf clubs at thrift stores to resell online. I check every time. I used to find more in Florida, but I found a couple at a garage sale this weekend. I bought two golf clubs this weekend. Bullseye putters, there you go. We're gonna skim through this section real quick. Women's jackets. Let's see if we can find some quick hitters. Clemson, Nike team. This ain't really my game. Surf's up, you still here? That's kind of more your game. That's a Clemson logo on this. It's an older tag, Nike team, size large. Dry fit, right? I guess, yeah, dry fit. What kind did you buy? What did I buy? I bought a Nike driver and I bought an Odyssey putter. They were, the wife was trying to sell me a whole bag of clubs, including that putter and that driver. She, she was like, oh, we'll just do 20 bucks in the whole bag. And I was like, okay. And I was like, well, I want that Odyssey putter and I want that driver. So I was like, then the husband came out. So I was like, hey, how much do you want for the, uh, for the driver and the, and the putter, I don't want the whole bag. And he said like 25 bucks. And I was like, well, your wife told me 20 bucks for the whole bag. <laughs> and uh, he's like, oh, she did, did she? I'm like, uh, yeah, sorry. And uh, he's like, all right, well, uh, he's like, what were you thinking? I was like, 10 bucks. He's like, okay. Because I just, somebody would, you know, some people would probably say like, hey, just buy the whole bag, why not? And all the other clubs, but they were really not great. It was not a good bag and it wasn't a good set of clubs. So I just didn't want to have mediocre inventory taking up space and not paying rent at my house. So I spent 10 bucks, got the two things I wanted out of it, nice and clean and got out of there. So Puma, Puffer. I don't know, what do y'all think about that? And never mind, it's all stained up. Awesome white hots. Um, I forget which model the Odyssey was at this point. I honestly don't remember. I'm gonna put up a video about it. I got footage of, all, I got a lot of garage sale footage from, uh, from Saturday. I'll be putting that stuff up over the next probably week or so as I get some time to edit. Be doing some kind of longer garage sale edits for you. I'm having fun with those edits too. I'm putting a little extra time in it. I'm just slapping them up. It's gonna be some production value to those. Oh, Michael Coors denim jacket, plus size men and women's jeans, yes. And of course, brands and models matter. Look up the brands, look up the models, but yes, bigger sizes tend to be better. Good question. Yep, $4.99 on all the shirts. Some of these jackets might be up at $9.99 like, or $6.99. That's a random price here. It's just... Was that a mistook jacket? Might have been. Is that a brand or mis mislook or something? Is that a brand? I asked about that earlier. I came across another item from that brand and nobody said anything about it. It was early on back here. Is that something? Is it this far back? I think it was this far back. Is that brand anything? Miss Miss Look, I think is what it was. I am not the person to follow, by the way, for women's clothing. Is this it? Miss Look? 
No, it's garbage. Okay. Comps are fairly good. Okay. This thing right here, what do they want? They want $6.99 on it. I think surf finds would work freaking super slick in this thing. Or like a, you see a Sandy Threads, one of his uh, thrift videos where he tells you first, he shows you his whole outfit. He's like, here's what I'm wearing up top and here's what I got for my shoes down here. Can you see him wearing this like miss look with the silver buttons like this and just like rocking that? I think so. Miss look is the better. No, it's not good. Miss Miss Ook is the good brand. Okay, Miss Ook is the better. Gotcha. Jackets thirty six nine nine. I still think we should get that for Sandy Breads. Send that out to Seattle. I don't know if you'd fit. It's a women's small. So up top, I got this new Miss Ook. I thrifted this. I love that dude's comment. Miss Ook, no L. Okay, I don't know that one. Did I pass one? Is that back in here somewhere? Is that what you're saying? There was a Miss Ook. What are the odds of there's a Miss Ook and a Miss Look? Women's Brands is like a whole nother, like a whole nother giant beast. I've been thrifting menswear for five years almost, and I find new brands every day, including today. Can you imagine? Like there's so many more women's brands. It would take a whole lifetime to learn all the valuable ones. Surps up, why no on clans because of the tag. Those Nike, those Nike golfs are uh, borderline on terms of sale, resale price. I used to pick up more of those things like the college logos and team logos. I used to actually do pretty well with them way back, 2018, 2019 kind of time frame, but it really slowed down for me. I used to pick up a lot of this kind of stuff too. For a while I was like getting into like China and stuff and it sells really slowly. It takes up a lot of space and they're the most likely items that you're gonna break even if you're like a super good packer. If FedEx wants to break your package, they're gonna break, your, break it. It's just the way it comes down to it. But I got into this stuff for a little while. I started learning some brands, started learning some patterns to look for and then I got out of it. Uh, especially if you move a lot like I do. I move like every couple of years, it seems. So uh, to pack this stuff up and, and move it is a huge pain too. So there's a lot of money to be made in that kind of stuff if you know what you're looking for. Um, I just sort of retreated from that market after learning a little bit about it and selling some stuff and breaking some stuff and making some money. I'm like, you know what? I don't really enjoy this all that much. I like flipping clothes. So. But I still skim these sections. I like this at garage sales, this kind of stuff, because you get it cheaper. High Wire Brewing, we love that place. I definitely don't need glasses. We're very minimalist. We have like, you know, probably five or six total drinking glasses. We don't use a dishwasher, because if you use a dishwasher, then you have like 14 glasses at any given time in the dishwasher, which means you need more than 14 glasses. So we just hand wash them, and all you need is like three, four, five, six couple coffee mugs you're good to go we also don't have kids and stuff like that so we do have an unfair advantage there we're on the fresh rack Ooh, it's a small pair of the 3130s i really don't want to pick these up 512s 3130s couple little blemishes no big deal i don't know Those will probably sit around for a little while and then sell for 20 bucks. Starbuck mug, skater, county travel ones sell for good money typically. Yeah, I've sold a lot of those over the years. Kind of got out of mugs a little bit too. If I occasionally find a good mug for cheap, especially at a garage sale, I probably can't say no to it. Oh, here we go. Whoa. Yeah, buddy. Look at that. Super, super heavy. Sherpa lines, size large men's, contrast collar, 
full zip. Freaking Carhartt. Let's go. Let's keep hitting. Let's go back to the well, will we? Sorry about the speaker. It's like right above my skull here. What do you think about this thing? It's super heavy. Usually don't pick up this brand, but for that pattern, really heavy jacket. Slippers, steel toed boots, and high heels. Available only at Goodwill of Northwest North Carolina stores while supplies last. Well, somebody rifled through my stuff. Get out of my stuff. Somebody rifled through. Hopefully, they didn't take anything. And look at it. They put that up there. Get off my lawn. So there we go, we'll pick that up. And again, it's this has got some like roughness to it and that does not matter one iota on something like this. Somebody who's buying this is looking for that kind of worn look. So that's awesome. So what do you think about this gap piece? So gap, Sherpa lined, it's a long jacket. Denim, $6.99 they got on it. I do sell some vintage Gap. I'll even sell some modern Gap on occasion. Sold some modern Gap flannels the other day for $24 a pop. Ladies, tell me about this. It's a long denim jacket. Never really seen one quite like this. Sherpa line, denim. That's a cool piece, I feel like, right? Some cool stitching accents. Gap is a bit at seven. How much was that Carhartt? Seven bucks. I have to look up the Carhartt. I feel like that Carhartt's an easy 60 plus, but I have to double check on that. So we got some yeses and some noes. I'm gonna look it up. When I have like half and half, I'll look it up. I don't know the answer. But I've done some well, I've done well with some of the, some Gap stuff. Don't go running out of here and picking up all the gap you see, but you know what I mean. That's like a Sherpa line denim jacket. It's kind of cool. I'm going to look it up, y'all. If you're watching this recording on YouTube, you'll know because I'll put a I'll put a comp up on the screen and I'll put some sort of indication of whether or not I picked it up or not. LL Bean denim jacket here. I want seven bucks for it. I have a feeling this is too much. It's a size extra small LL Bean denim jacket. Nice condition. It's not vintage, it's modern. Women's is not my game, so I need help from my friends. How much is a Carhartt? Seven bucks on the Carhartt. Seven on the seven on the uh, the Gap Sherpa line, and seven also on this LL Bean. Size extra small. It's meh. If it was small, I'd probably get it because it would fit Kim, and she likes this kind of thing. But I think extra small might just be too short on her. Great jacket, but so small, too small, excess is hard to sell. All right. I can't ask you all for your opinion and not listen to it, you know? I respect it. There's a vintage, or not a vintage, but a Levi's Western Pearl Snap. It's a small size too, it looks like. Medium. That's cool, I wish that fit Kim. I think that's probably too big for her. She would like that. The pearl snaps on the denim. I love that combo. J. Crew jeans, denim. Some of these J. Crew jeans have some value. This is not one of them, but there's a certain uh, denim from Japan that I forget what it's called off the top of my skull right now to look for. I look for those, but. The regular J Crews I don't usually pick up. It's a bigger size, size 29, nine inch demi cut boot crop. The boot's coming back, it's a raw hem. I think I'm still gonna pass on this. You ever mess around in the book section? I used to, that's another one of those categories that I got sort of semi-conversational in and then sort of, I just lost interest in it. Um, it's not my favorite thing. You know, the way to sell books is to get a book scanner, to get on Amazon and just like scan, scan, scan. Um, I don't know, I respect the hustle. There's a lot of money to be made. I know some resellers that do really well with that, but uh, not really not really my thing. Um, if I see textbooks or something at a garage sale, I'll snoop around about those and I'll comp them. 
That's an interesting game though too. You don't want to get like older editions of the textbooks because you might comp the new edition of the textbook and it might be worth 80 bucks or 90 bucks. But if you're looking at like the seventh edition, it's like 80 or 90 bucks and you have the fourth edition, the fourth edition might be worth like 20 bucks or 15 bucks or something like that. So um, you just gotta, that's a whole nother game. I'm conversational in it, but I'm not an expert in it. And I decided to niche down out of that. Get some Brooks shoes here. It's an older model Brooks. Women's, I'm gonna pass on those. That's exactly what I do. Yes, Tina Stone. It's good to be conversational in a lot of these other categories too, because it allows you to, to cherry pick at, you know, just do quick cherry picking like I'm doing at the corners of the thrift stores. It's also good for when you're garage selling because there's no like sections at the garage sale, right? You gotta go through what you see there in front of you. And sometimes it's really valuable stuff for really cheap at garage sales. And if you're conversational, you're dangerous enough to look it up really quick at the garage sale or just make, you know, like pick up an item for a buck and take a chance on it, you know? But I'm not just gonna like pick up these boots for seven bucks and take a chance on them, you know what I mean? But if, if I can get like five pairs of boots for a buck a piece at a garage sale, I'll take a chance on a few of them that I don't know as long as I know that two of them are worth money, you know? So the shoes look, don't look good. And again, I'm just cherry picking really quick, looking for something to jump off the shelf. I've kind of niched down out of shoes for the most part. Just don't find enough of them anymore for it to be worth my time. Eric found some good stuff, yeah. I think I'm gonna look up this Gap Sherpa. It's a modern Gap Sherpa long women's jacket. And I don't even know how much stuff we got in this cart. Thank you all for tapping the screen. Appreciate it. Camera. Here we go. Here he is. So everyone, appreciate you all hanging out for a little bit. This is a lot of fun. Second live of the day. We got some good stuff. We got some good stuff. I, I appreciate everybody in the chat too. I asked you to look some stuff up. Sometimes I didn't even ask you to look stuff up. You were just looking stuff up for me. So I appreciate that a ton. I'm going to look up a few of these things in the cart. Of course, I'm going to go over all the all the items that are in the cart. I'm gonna look at condition details. Um, I'm gonna comp a few of these things because yeah, I'm still learning too. We found some cool stuff. I'm thinking, what do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I don't know, there's something, something between like 17 and 20 items in the cart, so that's not bad. My guess is that I'll probably put five or six of these items back because I comped them and they weren't good or they were stained or something, or I found a flaw or whatever, right? So yeah, so maybe we ended up getting 15 items. Again, I'm gonna put this whole recording, if you're watching on TikTok, this will be on YouTube. It'll be on YouTube tomorrow morning, so Wednesday morning, 9.15 a.m. I'll drop it, I'll let you all know on all the socials. If you're not subscribed over on YouTube, now would be a good time to go click on my name up above, and I, I think it's the top link, just go to, I know it's the top link. So go ahead and give me a subscription over there. I'd love to have you over on YouTube. Obviously that's where the longer content goes, which is not really super appropriate for TikTok. Also consider giving me a follow on Instagram. On Instagram every day, I haven't done it yet today, I gotta do that. I post a sale and I go into depth of why that item is valuable, why I picked that up versus other items from that brand that I might've passed on. So consider following over on Instagram if you haven't already. Again, all that stuff's linked up above. So anyway, thanks everyone for hanging out. I had a ton of fun. I hope you had some fun. Maybe you learned something too. If you did, let me know down.